signified of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. This is Jacob Burden. He's an apprentice chef at the Omni Dallas. But before that, he was just like you, a student in Mesquite ISD. Jacob set a goal and then made it happen. Big dreams, big goals, big life. Oh, I didn't see you there. We're, we're gonna tell you about Elementary Tuesday. Elementary Tuesday is Tuesday. Wear your house colors to show the importance of our stances, empathy, flexibility, persistence, resilience, and optimism. That are all needed to get us through elementary, middle school, high school, and college. Homecoming is Friday the 20th. Also, the community pep rally is this Thursday at Poteen High School. They have food, games, and you can also run through the tunnel. Trash Pass is this Saturday, September 21st, 9 a.m. to noon. It's at City Lake Aquatic Center. Mysteries with Parents is Friday, September 20th, from 7.15 a.m. to 7.50 a.m. The Kimball PTA is providing donuts for families next Friday. Stop by the school for a tasty donut and an opportunity to shop together at our Scholastic Book Fair. If you plan to be attending, please fill out the bottom of this form by September 19th, by Thursday, September 19th, that we can, so that we can have a head count. Thank you so much. The book fair starts today! Bring money to buy books from the library. It ends on Friday. So for today's news, we have Spring Creek. Spring Creek night is October the 21st. Make sure to come try our delicious food. And help our school earn money.
you ready for your jamming minute, boys and girls? Yeah. Yay. Okay, let's do the windmill now, okay? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job, boys and girls. Let's go mountain climbing now, okay? Let's stretch those arms and legs up. Reach up high, boys and girls. Climb three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, hop on left foot, boys and girls. Okay, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right foot now. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's do a squat and balance on our feet. Hands out, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boys and girls, our healthy tip today is drink plenty of water, okay? If you get real thirsty, you've not had enough water yet, so drink water in sips all day long if you can. Good morning, Kimball. The last chapters we read were very exciting. Not only did we have a storm, we had a robot that almost went over the edge of a cliff, and now she's hiding, or she was hiding in a pine tree cone, And but then it ended with her going into a cave. And that's what's gonna be our problem here, because look what's in that cave. Bears. Chapter 14, The Bears. Roz stomped into the cave, and then she stomped right back out. Please stay away, said the robot to the two bears, who were now nipping at her heels. You see, when Roz stomped into the cave, she accidentally woke a brother and sister bear from their morning nap, which is never a good idea. And to make matters worse, bears have an instinct that drives them to attack a creature who runs away especially if the creature running away is a mysterious sparkling monster. So as the startled bears watched Roz stomping out of their cave, they really had no choice at all. They simply had to take up the chase. Roz tried her best to outrun the bears. She leaped over rocks and wove through trees and stomped across the mountainside at full speed. But the bears were young and strong and fast and the robot still had so much to learn about moving through the wilderness. She never even saw the tree root. One moment, she's stomping along, and the next moment, she's flying through the air and thumping down onto a rotten log. Clumps of soft wood stuck to her side as she stood and faced her attackers. Wouldn't you be afraid if two bears were charging toward you? Of course you would! Everyone would! Even the robot felt something like fear. Roz was programmed to take care of herself. She was programmed to stay alive. And as the robot watched those bears charging toward her, she knew her life was in serious danger. The bears slammed into Roz, knocking her against the trunk of a towering tree. Then one bear dove at her legs and the other clawed at her chest. If only the robot had swung her fist or kicked her feet, she could have scared them off. One good bop on the nose would have sent them running. But the robot's programming would not allow her to be violent. Clearly, Roz was not designed to fight bears. Powerful jaws chomped at her arms. Sharp claws slashed at her face. A massive head rammed her in the chest. Please stay away, said the robot. Rawr, said the sister bear, Rawr, said the brother bear. And then the bears went in for the kill. But the robot had vanished. Chapter 15, The Escape. 
using all the strength in her legs, Roz jumped straight up high into the air and landed on a tree branch overhead. The tree shook with the sudden weight of the robot and then thunk thunk, two pine cones bounced off Roz and a moment later, thunk thunk, the same pine cones bounced off the bears below. The bears grunted with annoyance and this gave Roz an idea. The robot's programming stopped her from being violent, but nothing stopped her from being annoying. So Roz plucked pine cones from the nearby branches and then lobbed them down at the bears. Thunk, 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 thunk. Each pine cone bounced off its target with annoying accuracy and whipped the young bears into a frenzy. Look how high she jumped. They're down here. Rawr, said the sister bear said the brother bear. I do not understand you, bears, said the robot. Roz was about to unload a whole armful of annoying pine cones when a distant roar echoed through the forest. Back at the cave, the mother bear was calling for these two and she did not sound happy. The young bears looked at each other. They knew they were in trouble. But before lumbering home, they glared up at Roz and snorted one last time. More than anything, they wanted that robot. We're going to stop there for today.